Okay, hello everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for January 2nd, 2024. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jepler, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which, as you may know, is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers known as microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is sponsored primarily by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday, as it did yesterday when we celebrated New Year's Day. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, or if you'd like to speak in the meeting, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes doc that accompanies the meeting and recording. Before the meeting, we all add our notes to the document. Then after the meeting, it is um, uploaded to GitHub and linked from the video, so you can check around in the show notes to find the part that interests you the most. This meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes, although I'm guessing we will run shorter today as we've got uh, a fairly small number of people in just after the holiday. After each meeting, uh, we post the meeting, the link to the next meeting document. Uh, Melissa, if you could mute, that would be very helpful. Uh, after each meeting, we post the link to the upcoming notes document so that you can add your notes at any time during the week. Um, and of course, if you wish to participate but cannot attend, or it's just inconvenient to uh, speak live, or you know, for whatever reason, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting, and the host will read those out. All right, so this meeting is held in five parts. Next up is community news, where we take a look at the Python on Hardware newsletter. After that is the State of Circuit Python, the libraries, and Blinka, where we look at some numbers that describe the project health. Then it's time for y'all to participate with me, and we continue with Hug Reports, an opportunity to uh, highlight the good things that folks in this community have been doing, because it's really important to take the time to recognize the awesome people around us in the community. The fourth part, and really the meat of the meeting, is the status updates, where we want to hear what you've been up to since we last got together, and what you're going to be up to in the near future. So please take a couple of minutes and update us on what is going on with you. And the final uh, part is called In the Weeds, if there's something that doesn't fit within the structure, for instance, because um, it calls for more discussion, um, then this is when we do it at the end of the meeting. If you do have one of these topics, please add it at your earliest convenience, and we just take those in the order that they are in the document. And that covers how the meeting will go, so I'm excited to start telling you about some community news. MicroPython version 1.22.0 was released over the holidays. Uh, the latest release uh, introduces SSL and TLS support to async I.O. for both client and server, and the interface is the same as on standard CPython. Um, Qster pools are now sorted, and this provides a performance boost. And the final item that might be of interest is that um, this was also the fix for a security vulnerability known as CVE-2023-7158. Um, and I also just want to note that CircuitPython is not affected by this in any of our binary builds because uh, the vulnerability exists when you enable a feature that CircuitPython does not use. So for your CircuitPython machines, you don't have to worry about that. All right, next up, we have a magazine review of one of Adafruit's products, the title is CircuitPython Powering Adafruit's Memento Camera Board Makes Programming Vision Apps a Snap. And uh, in the notes doc, you can find a link both to the product and uh, to the review on hackster.io and cnxsoftware.com. All right, next we have a project. The CT6 is a Raspberry Pi Pico W powered four port home energy monitor running on a Raspberry Pi Pico W with MicroPython. And there are links to Hackster.io and GitHub if you want to learn more about that. And that rounds out the extracts from the newsletter that I picked. There is a lot of stuff in this community-run newsletter that is curated by, by our very own Ann B., also known as Ann Engineer. And it is emailed every Monday. 
You can also find the complete archives on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuitpython. And the aim, as always, is to highlight the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, and that includes CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython. We really want to, con to have news and projects come from the community, and you can do that by editing next week's draft on GitHub and submitting a pull request with the changes. You can also email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X, formerly known as Twitter. All right. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So we have a little bot called Adabot that runs every night or in the wee hours of the night and summarizes seven days of activity. And this is actually the report that was generated Monday morning, um, just so that we take the time to recognize everybody. When it shifts by one day, um, then we might miss a day. So this won't include any activity from Monday. It includes the previous seven days, which were pretty quiet because of the holiday that uh, many folks observe. All right. So overall, we had 17 pull requests merged from 10 authors and five reviewers. And uh, there are a couple of names here that are less familiar to me. So I really want to thank in particular How to Flow, T Niche, uh, and J-I-N-S T. Komoda for your contributions, whatever those were. And of course, thank you to the reviewers. Um, Tectric, nice to see you popping up on this list. And issues-wise, we had 11 closed issues by six people, while 19 issues were opened by 17 people, um, which of course puts us net up on the issues. So next, I'm going to tell you about the core, which is the part of CircuitPython that is written in the C language that you load onto your device, typically as a UF2 file. Um, in the core, we had four pull requests merged from four authors and two reviewers. We've got 20 open pull requests at the moment, um, about half of which are draft and half of which are not. And of course, we encourage you with those older uh, PRs to uh, move them out of draft state if you can. And if you're waiting on us for action, please ask because um, you know, we don't always understand that you're waiting for something from us. Um, it's really good to see some of those move forward. Issues-wise, we saw five closed issues by 13 people. No, five issues closed by three people, while we saw 13 issues opened by 12 people. So it's within the core that most of those additional uh, new issues were. And uh, that leaves us with 690 open issues. Um, we organize those by milestones to keep people apprised of what work Adafruit is uh, prioritizing. And uh, so the important ones right now are the 8.2x milestone, which are bugs that we plan to fix in the stable version of CircuitPython, and that stands at zero open issues. So that's great. Um, it means we may not see another 8.2 release unless we become aware of new, new problems. Uh, next up, the 900 milestone. These are the issues that we want to address before we release the stable version uh, 9, which is our kind of next big feature upgrade. It's like it got lots of good stuff in there, but it also has 49 open issues that we need to address before that is ready for folks to use. Um, finally, we've got 13 issues not assigned a milestone, and this is in part because a bunch of us are on vacation, and uh, Scott and Dan are continuing to uh, take some time off, so we may not be categorizing those in the near future, but uh, that doesn't mean that we don't appreciate your issue reports when you file them. Um, and this is also to say those uh, 573 long-term issues, that represents that Adafruit doesn't prioritize that right now, but we would love anyone to pick up some of those issues and work on them and improve CircuitPython in a way that is relevant to your use cases. All right, and with that said, I'm also going to read the library section today. The libraries are the part of CircuitPython that's implemented in Python code. Um, traditionally, it's much easier for folks to pick up how to uh, contribute to the libraries than how to contribute to the core, and that is one reason that we separate these out. Anyway, statistics. We had eight pull requests merged from four authors with two reviewers, and there is a list of merged pull requests in the notes document. That leaves us with 57 open pull requests ranging in age from 1 to 501 days, and issues-wise, we saw two closed issues and six open issues by two and five people respectively. That leaves 711 open issues, 19 of which are tagged as good first issue. 
You can uh, see this and a lot more information at circuitpython.org slash contributing. Um, and I have a little more to tell you about contributing to CircuitPython. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out that link I just mentioned, circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find a list of open PRs and a list of open issues. If you're looking to contribute, this is a great place to start. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the list of open PRs. Take a look at the code. If you have the hardware to test it, do so. Otherwise, you can have a look at the syntax, spelling, etc. Leave a comment to let us know you looked at it. And once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up into the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. You can sort by label, so you search for good first issue if you're just getting started, or bug or enhancement if you're looking for something a little bit more complicated. We have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help you get started with that. So let us know if you need any assistance. Don't let the process intimidate you. We want you to be able to contribute in a way that works for you. And uh, something that isn't on this list um, is uh, we have a bundle called the Community Bundle. If you, you know, want to start something totally new in CircuitPython, it doesn't exist yet. You know, you, you've got an idea for a washing machine interface in CircuitPython. You can also create a whole new Python library and later uh, contribute it to us via the community bundle where you retain full control of your project, but it becomes easy to install with tools like Circup. So that's yet another way to contribute. Um, all right. And with that, uh, I've got a few more statistics to tell you about. Uh, we track our PyPI weekly downloads. And in the last seven days, there were 90,423 PyPI downloads, which is down a little bit from our usual. I think we usually top 100,000, but no surprise, as a lot of people were taking some time off. And there is a list of the top 10 libraries by download count in the document. And last up, library updates in the last seven days. We saw four updated libraries. The list is in the notes document and one new library that is in that community bundle I was mentioning to you, and that is from our very own Cedar Grove, C. Grover, uh, who has contributed the Wave Builder um, library. And I believe there's also a write-up of Wave Builder in the newsletter this week, so check that out. It is kind of cool. And with that, I am going to get to take a brief break from talking as Melissa tells us about Blinka. Hello, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for uh, MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this uh, time we had five pull requests merged by two authors and two reviewers. Um, there, were, there are currently eight open pull requests amongst all the repositories. Uh, there were four closed issues by one person and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 80 open issues. Uh, there were 10,635 Pi PI downloads in the last week, 9,225 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 128 boards. That's I, think a, I think a bunch of the people who took time off from CircuitPython were working on Blinka because that is, uh, those are some higher numbers than we've been seeing in a while. But anyway, that wraps up this um, new CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. If you want to respond to that note, Melissa, please. Yeah, please. actually, I think a, a lot of that is because I've been working, focusing on Blinka these last couple weeks. Yeah, very cool. It's nice to see some stuff happening there. Yeah. Okay, with that, I will move on to Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, then we'll go down the list in the document order to give everybody a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. And if I happen to skip over you by mistake, please drop a note in the text channel and I will get back to you. And so I have a group hug because I've been spending a little time away from y'all and it's just nice to be back um, and getting back into things. But I also have a hug for Paul Cutler. He interviewed me last week for his podcast. With any luck, I think that episode is airing in about two to three weeks, so look for it. And uh, if I understand correctly, with uh, this episode, Paul Cutler will have interviewed all the Adafruit folks who are working on CircuitPython at the moment for some definition of everybody, because we've got a lot of people um, who, who chip in now and then. Uh, anyway, next up, a hug for Cedar Grove. I mentioned your Waveform library, and I think it's really cool. 
And I also didn't know about uh, the project you talk about down in your uh, status updates, CG35. That also looks very cool. And also a preemptive hug to everybody who will share your ideas with Adafruit and the community about uh, your CircuitPython 24 CircuitPython 2024 vision and goals, and I'm going to say a little bit more about that down in the in the weeds section when we get there. But now I've got notes from folks to read. So Anecdata writes, uh, thanks to me for figuring out the proper fix for getting Hashlib onto a broader array of boards. C. Grover says, a hug for M. Martin Ortiz on GitHub for comments and suggestions regarding the range slicer repo. Thank you. And a group hug to the team and the community. Then I have some notes from DJ Devon 3 who has a hug for Jose Posada for the Touch Slider Library, one for Delchi for an excellent GUI design of an LCARS-themed touch display, to Justin for a neat idea for consolidating repeated code across libraries that use sockets, one for Dan H for helping in Discord and doing some last-minute holiday bug report reviews, a hug for Foamy Guy for streaming work on a grid layout soft keyboard, because a touch keyboard... Because a touch display keyboard requires so many cells, it brought up some inefficiencies in the way grids were previously loaded. He tackled that as well. It's been awesome watching him improve grid layout and creating the foundation for touch keyboard related projects. And finally, a group holiday hug. All right, more notes from Foamy Guy, uh, who has hugs for Bear, Anecdated, and DJ Devon 3, all for helping folks on Discord in the Help With channel. To me, for the font bundle. A hug for Melissa for adding vector I.O. implementation to Blinga Display I.O. And a group hug. And rounding out the section, I don't know that I've ever read every hug report in a meeting before, but uh, understandably, people are still taking their holiday time and their family time, and that's super important. So um, anyway, Scott Tannude writes a hug for Jepler for keeping things going while Dan and I are out, and one for Foamy Guy for doing the next two deep dives. And that concludes hug reports and brings us over to the status updates. Uh, oh, I actually forgot to side. write mine in there, but I wanted to give a group hug to everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Well, if you haven't written your uh, status updates, now's a great time. Anyway, so status updates. It's time to tell folks what you're up to uh, as an individual. I will start, and again, we'll go through the document in order. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. It's also an opportunity to provide quick tips and tricks related to what folks are working on. But if it becomes a discussion, then we'll move it to in the weeds. And um, I don't, uh, yeah. Of course, we also want to hear what's going on outside of CircuitPython to know each other a little better as people. But anyway, uh, I will get started. So uh, last week, I mostly did some small things. I was um, kind of not working, but I kind of was. Uh, so there was a problem that you could run the uh, build command called make translate, uh, which you need to do when you change certain things in the C Py in the in the CircuitPython source. Uh, but if you didn't do another step before that, you could create a file that was missing some stuff that needed to be there. So I made this uh, make translate check for the problem and automatically resolve it. So hopefully that won't uh, trouble people in the future. Next up, I have a PRN to enable hash lib on a bunch of boards. This was uh, brought up by um, a community member, and uh, Anecdata offered a pull request to, to do this, but the build wasn't quite right, so I went and did it in a different way. And once this PR is merged, Hashlib will be supported on basically every board where it fit within the available flash size, so that'll be really cool. Uh, I helped review some pull requests, and I also uh, made a pull request to merge the changes from version 8.2 into main, and I'm, I'm blanking on what that uh, particular change was, but there was a particular change uh, to do with socket handling uh, that we wanted, that was made in 8.2x and we also wanted in main. The week before that, um, I was working on JPEG enhancements, and those are now merged to the main branch. They're still, I don't think they're in a release yet, I'm not sure, and I also made some bundler enhancements related to that. So up this week, I'm looking at how to integrate the JPEG decoding into the portal-based library on boards that support it. And um, I need to figure out who to talk to internally so that we can use the font bundle in learning system guides. There's that uh, link download project bundle and it does not know to look in the font bundle for uh, necessary libraries and so they just won't be there. So we can't use that functionality yet. And uh, then I will probably be coding the changes to the screenshot builder, which um, is a Python project that's just on GitHub. 
Um, and then I had another random thought about, uh, you know, what are things where we have a binary file that's associated or, you know, that we want to use in CircuitPython. And, and the idea is, what if you could just import waveforms to use with SynthIO? I think that would be really cool. Uh, there are a couple of libraries of free waveform samples out there. One is called AKWF, and it would be neat if somebody created a bundle that just incorporated all of those and made them easy to install with CircUp and import. But anyway, next up we have notes from a bunch of other folks. Uh, so, C. Grover uh, writes, continued to refine the SynthIO waveform object tool wave builder, updated the playground notes to include some experimental sounds, and released the class to the community bundle. Designed a basement add-on board for JP's Fader Wave PCB. This add-on provides an I2S amplifier or stereo DAC connection when using the Itsy Bitsy RP2040. Next on the list is to prototype a port of the CG35 reverse Polish calculator for use with the new 3.5-inch capacitive touch TFT display, hoping that will work more reliably with the tiny on-screen keys. Uh, I assume the other board is a resistive touchscreen. And if you don't know, the CP35 emulates the iconic HP35 calculator. And in the notes doc, there is a link to the GitHub repo for that. Check it out. It looks, it looks cool. It looks good. All right. Next, notes from DJ Devon 3 who says, Continued integrating touch features into Feather Weather. Using CircuitPython Slider by Jose Posada for TFT PWM brightness control. Really excited to work with Foamy Guy's new touchscreen layout to create a fully self-contained device. No need to connect via USB or web workflow to change SSID, password, or preferences. It can be done on the touch display itself, albeit it is still a work in progress. The change from display.show to display.root group equals group has created a different syntax to switch between display groups. I'm using it in a way that I hadn't seen as an example in a learn guide yet, and is easy enough for absolute beginners to understand. Eventually, I'd like to write a touch GUI playground note. And finally, updated JP's weather matrix display to work with updated 9.x code on the matrix portal S3. It also uses the newer Open Weather Map 2.51 call API. There's a link to DJ Devon's example on GitHub. It's obviously not an official thing, just a personal project based on a user support question. All right, next up, I have notes from FedA2. I've ordered the new RISC-64 Milk V Duo Linux microcontroller. There is a new release with a new version of the chip, and they now support Arduino IDE for the smaller core. I'm trying to put CircuitPython on these boards as they are quite powerful, very cheap, and pin compatible with the Raspberry Pico. I hope I can get a memento so that I can test an iNaturalist library I've been working on on the portal and other ESP32 boards. This allows to download images from iNaturalist, no API key required, and now with the camera it will be interesting to upload images as well. And next is Foamy Guy. These are their updates. Uh, confirmed the existence of an issue in Adafruit request and tested the fix in the proposed pull request. Worked on the soft keyboard helper library and worked on Pygame display library for use with Blink and Display I.O. Solved the major show stopping issues with the latest versions, but a few smaller quirks remain, mostly around manual refresh calls. We'll poke a little further, but plan to make a release even if I can't get it perfect so that it will be compatible with the latest versions of Blink and Display I.O. And with that, uh, Maker Melissa, we're ready to hear from you. Hello. Um, okay. I, this last week, uh, or a couple of weeks, I added Vector I.O. to Blink and Display I.O. and removed Pillow as a requirement. I uh, figured out a uh, workaround for an issue with the Raspberry Pi 5 where the CE0 and CE1 pins were in use. Um, I fixed some of the Raspberry Pi installer scripts, and I will be testing out the speaker bonnet with Pi 5 probably today, and I'll hopefully get that uh, working if it isn't. And that's where I'm at. Thank you, Melissa. And we'll round out this section with notes from Scott, who writes, My mom passed away peacefully just before Christmas. We were headed on a delayed family trip uh, January 4th to the 15th, back in my office on the 16th, and picking things up then. Kicked off CircuitPython 2024 yesterday and will go all month. There is a link to the Adafruit blog in the uh, notes document. Scott writes, I'll try and post updates every few days when I get emails from CircuitPython 2024 at adafruit.com. Submitted a talk proposal to PyCascades about CircuitPython workflows. 
The deadline is January 4th in case anyone else wants to apply. Uh, and finally, got the 13-inch e-ink working with CircuitPython, but it will need another keyword argument in ePaper display because it addresses pixels in both directions. And there is a link to a Mastodon post about that. All right, and that concludes status updates and brings us to the in the weeds section. And um, Justin has the first item, so um, if your mic is, uh, if you're talking today, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, everybody, and happy new year. Um, I guess my first question is going to be, is it worth talking about these two things this week with so few people, or would it be better to just move them on to next week's when we have more people back? Um, I think, you know, definitely it would be helpful if Dan and Scott were here because um, I, I would kind of look to them for, for guidance on this stuff. But if you want to go through it, um, just to let people know what you're up to since you didn't do a status update, um, kind of tackle it from that point of view might be useful. Yeah, I would be happy to. Um, so this first one, so basically based on some feedback, I had originally created a socket manager um, in from requests and basically got some PR feedback on a high level to kind of separate stuff out, had some back and forth and rebuilt a new library called Connection Manager um, that does all of that. There is the pull request there with some pretty high level comments um, for anyone who wants to review it. In that pull request also has the two PRs for the changes in both the requests and MQTT um, that people can go look at and see. Um, I worked pretty hard to make sure that there wasn't a lot of um, increase in size um, and also did some things with logging and things like that. Um, so feel free to look at that PR, make comments if you are um, someone <coughs> that's got some general expertise there. That would be awesome and appreciated. Um, and kind of as a side note on this second bullet point, um, I'm a heavy PyCharm user, um, have been for a very long time. And so whenever anyone asks comments on it, I usually ask or I respond. And someone had asked if there were stubs for specific boards um, for the pins. I had been making them by hand for the small handful of boards I have. Um, and it was a holiday and I had a little extra time and I was like, I wonder how hard it would be to automate this. Um, and so I put together a quick script. Um, again, you can look at it here. Um, it's linked here and it actually goes out and um, builds a custom um, board stub for all of the boards in the um, that are in the repo um, that can be used and would love to talk to people about potentially automating this and actually having them all get built, um, even going as far as making sure that other things that weren't on the board were removed from the stubs as well. Um, I had looked at some stuff um, from how the matrix is built as well. So, um, so feel free to look at these two things if you're interested, make comments if you can. And I will bring these back up next week where we can go into them in a little bit more detail. All right. I, the second one looks pretty neat. Um, I have helped with some with the stubs, and I had not come up with a good idea around how to provide different files for each board. So I'm curious, would this be, mean like there would be a different pip installable stubs library for each board that CircuitPython supports, or how would that function? Yeah, so there would be two ways. To me, that would be the most ideal way. And that way, as you're building things for different ones, you can kind of see on that last thing. So instead of circuit Python stubs, you'd have circuit Python stubs, Adafruit Feather, ESP32, mm -hmm. S3. Um, I know there was lots of talk. I didn't follow it all the way with the fonts and things and trying to figure out, like, do we want to have all of the, you know, just Adafruit want to have all of these different things up on PyPy and things like that. Um, the other option would be to have them go out and trying to find a way that you could easily copy them. So right now, what I've always done is I just copied into the root of my project and rename it board.piy, PYI, um, and then it works fine. And then it's a small file at the end. So even if it lands on the microcontroller, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, and so I, I think there's options. So it'd be interesting to find out if people are willing to, you know, if Adafruit wants to have all of those on their PyPy account or not, um, or if there's something else. So I'm happy to tackle and try to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, 
So yeah, um, and I even if they just review, exist in a repo for someone to pull down manually. So I'd have to review like how do we actually build um, what how do we do the releasing process of the CircuitPython stubs? I'd have to refresh my memory about that. And I, you know, would worry that um, you'd hit some kind of rate limit on PyPI when you want to updo, upload uh, 400 packages in quick succession. But um, I think it's a cool idea. I'm really glad that you did this. Okay. You can also, I can also try to do some research and I, I will just go do this. I know you can have secondary comments um, when you install something. Um, mm -hmm. And so we might be able to do them as like subversions or modules. And so you would do what, you know, you would install CircuitPython stubs like with Adafruit Feather, ESP32 or whatever, mm -hmm. and it would know to grab that particular board. Um, so I can definitely do some looking into that to see if we can get it all into one package. So I hadn't thought of the rate limiting of, you know, 400 some odd boards and which will just go up from here. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm interested in that idea. Uh, but yeah, when uh, when Scott and Dan are able to participate, I think, and Tim, you'll you'll just get more um, more useful info about particularly the request stuff than I can provide. Thank you very much. All right, and then I just wanted to talk a little bit more about CircuitPython 2024. Um, normally, Scott would do that, and as you heard, he is out spending family time. So anyway, this uh, is um, based on a blog post on the Adafruit blog, and for a number of years, we've solicited anybody in the community to kind of give us your vision for uh, where CircuitPython should move in 2024, or what it is you hope to accomplish with CircuitPython in 2024. And um, yeah, so just talking about some goal setting. And on the Adafruit blog and linked in the notes document, you can find um, links to recaps of the past years, and you can also find instructions on how to uh, contribute to this year. So the, the top way is to email um, a special email address that uh, is in that blog post, and that will help Scott um, kind of pull those into his wrap up. Although I think we're also talking about taking um, comments on social media such as Mastodon, and we really just want to hear from folks what is your vision for CircuitPython? And we're not going to all come to one collective vision because we all have different different things that are important to us. But it's really helpful to know what what are people wanting to do with CircuitPython? What are the weaknesses that they see? And that that helps us. That helps everybody because you know we talk about this stuff. And anyway, yeah. So head to the Adafruit blog and look for that CircuitPython 2024 post and let us know your thoughts. And with that, I am going to wrap up this meeting. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, who left their notes and those couple of you who were here to participate live. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for January 2nd, 2024. To support folks like me who work on CircuitPython, uh, it's really helpful when you purchase your stuff from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. If you're outside of the U.S., there is a uh, link to distributors in, in various countries that's at the bottom of the Adafruit page, and we love it if you would buy from them as well. The video for this meeting is released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will go up on major podcast services. It will also be linked in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which has all kinds of cool Python and hardware stuff. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. That'll be Monday, January 8th, 2024. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, and to be unable to speak in the meeting, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. We uh, hope to see you next week. Thank you, everybody.